Hi, I'm Jacob with National Fleet Products, and today we're going to be installing a swivel loading ramp from WM Systems, and we're going to be installing it into a Dodge Ram Promaster van. This happens to be a high roof. There are no changes uh, to the mounting procedure if it's a high roof, low roof, or with the different wheelbases. So what we're going to cover today is going to be good for any of your installs. And we're going to start right away with step one. It's going to be to remove your spare tire. So without any further ado, let's get started. Okay, step two, what we're going to take a look at is your different mounting options. Uh, you can see in this van today, there is a floor. So that's going to be the first uh, obstacle you're going to encounter is we need to cut out and recess this plate into whatever floor you might have and make sure it's metal to metal contact. If you don't have a floor, you can skip this step and continue on. But if you do happen to have a floor, uh, this one happens to be a heavy rubber mat. So we're gonna show you how to trim that. If you have a wood floor, uh, like a hard compressed plywood or a nylon floor, you will need to cut those out as well. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a marker or a knife and score this, outline it, pull our mounting plate out, and then start cutting. So we'll show you what that looks like next. Okay, you can see we have our mounting plate placed here. We're gonna center this in the body. It does fit relatively well. And go ahead and just mark where this plate is. We happen to be using a silver Sharpie today, so we get some contrast. But I'll show you what this looks like and we'll peel the plate back and show you what we'll be removing. And that's where we'll be trimming out. Regarding cutting and recessing this into a wood floor, I would like to make some tool recommendations. For the majority of the cuts, a skill saw is going to be just fine. But once you get a little closer into the corners, and if you'd like to get a little more detail, I would recommend you choose a oscillating tool or a multi-tool type saw like this. Uh, it's going to allow you to get a little more detail and provide a better fit and finish. It really just uh, depends what look you're going for. But again, for a wood floor, I'd recommend these two. We happen to have a rubber floor, so we're gonna cut it out with a different method, which we'll show you next. We're in the thick of it here, cutting up this rubber mat. And you'll find if you do have a rubber mat that they're incredibly difficult to saw with one of those skill saws or oscillating saws like I showed you before. Uh, so we happen to be just using a, a sharp knife. And as uh, you saw before, we'd marked where we need this trimmed. And you're just gonna be scoring and fighting to get that peeled back. All right, we have finished trimming out our floor and recessing that plate in. You can see it's in there now. And our next step is just gonna be a quick preparatory move here. I'm gonna ask you to take some tape and we're gonna mark, in this case, we're gonna mark our leading edge here. If you didn't have a wood floor, I would want you to mark this edge as well. I just want you to mark the perimeter of it. Doesn't have to be too scientific. Again, it's just gonna be a good marker of where that plate lives. It'll show us uh, some stuff that we're gonna to need to see a little bit. Our next step is gonna be getting prepared to drill our mounting holes. And what I'd like to point out next is, again, this plate is in here and we've centered it within the doorway. On either side, we have just about a finger's width of space. But what we're gonna be doing is drilling through the floor to attach to some underbody mounting plates that we've provided. You'll notice these are slotted, so no matter where this plate ends up, you will have a little bit of flexibility on lining up with this plate underneath. What I would like to point out is there is a driver's side plate and a passenger side plate. They're the mirror version of each other, but they are side specific. They will only go up one way. And uh, these are gonna mount on the outside of your frame rail, and that's where you'll be drilling and bolting through. We're gonna show you that next, where we're gonna mark and drill all these holes through the floor of the vehicle. And I'd like to take this moment to again mention if you haven't done so already, please lower your spare tire. These two holes right here in the middle will go through the sidewall and pop that spare real quickly. At this point, we're ready to begin drilling. And today we're gonna to start with using a 25 64 fit. That just happens to be the size that I have available. But you're gonna be going ahead and pre-drilling all the holes in the floor here. We'll enlarge some of them later, but I'll show you what those are separately. For now, again, just get all these uh, holes started. We have our preliminary holes drilled, we've removed the plate, and now we're going to be enlarging some. 
Uh, the center four, this one here, this one, and these two don't need to be. But on your left, the five holes over here and the three holes over here, they do need to be enlarged. Today we're gonna to use a step bit for that just because it's easier in this situation, but you could use a regular bit as well. We're gonna shoot for about a five eighths, and that'll give us a little bit of slot to allow the bolt holes to be uh, off center if they might be, and it'll make for a quicker and easier install. So let's go ahead and enlarge these right now. And it's time to clean up. So go ahead and grab the vacuum and prep this for uh, the final treatments. Now that we're cleaned up and ready to go, we need to put some sort of rust inhibiting treatment on these holes because that is a bare metal surface and they are exposed from the underside, so you don't want this vehicle rusting out from below. Um, today we're going to use a rust inhibitor. Um, There's a, a rust treatment product, if you can see these. But really anything you would normally use to seal up these holes, whether it's a primer and then paint, uh, you know, the options are almost limitless. So whatever you're comfortable with, go ahead and treat these holes and, and get them ready for uh, the final install here. Okay, at this point we have prepped uh, and we're ready to kind of put this final assembly together. I'd ask you to set the mounting plate in there one more time and take the bolts provided and just check and make sure that indeed all your holes do line up where they are. Again, the plate sometimes shifts. And what I remind you is, uh, we're not actually bolting to the floor. We're capturing uh, two mounting plates together and the floor happens to be sandwiched. It's not providing any structural integrity. So if you need to make those holes oversized a little bit, so you have plenty of room to make this fit through, you should indeed do that. Uh, don't be afraid to open them up as needed. And now that you've checked your hole location, I'd like you to grab a permanent marker. We're gonna make some notes here on the tape that we've applied. If you come a little bit closer, I'll show you what's gonna happen. Uh, we're going to be putting some nylon shins under here to help uh, keep you from crushing the floor by accident. And what I'd like to note is there's two locations for the passenger side lock placement. And those bolts do protrude through beneath a little bit, so we want to mark where they are so that you don't accidentally put a shim underneath it. Today we're going to be doing a 47-inch ramp, so we've just noted this general location here. If you were doing a 37, you'd mark it off uh, as needed. And we'll show you what that looks like here again uh, in a minute, but I want you to see this while the plate's in place. You can go ahead and remove this, and we're going to start laying out the shims. Okay, we're going to take the nylon shims provided. There's some small ones and large ones, as well as the E6000 glue to affix it to the vehicle. And what I take you, or ask you to do is take these small ones. We're going to line these fingers across the rear of the vehicle. We'll show you how they're placed, but they'll go in here in between the ribs. And with the large ones, we tend to put these on either side to help provide a little more support where you're going to be bolting through. But what I'd like you to know is that you can take these large ones and cut them down to size as needed. And they don't have to go right over the hole. We'll show you that they can be placed just adjacent to it. Again, the idea is to keep you from accidentally crushing the floor. It doesn't have to be used like a washer would potentially where you have to drill through it and go through it. If you have the time and ability, please, uh, I, I would encourage you to do it, but it is not required. Um, you could though glue this in place, put the plate down, chase the holes out, and then bolt through if you'd like to. It's not required, we're not going to do that today, and as we place these, we'll show you what the final product should look like. At this point, we have our nylon shims glued to the floor, and I'd like to give you a close-up of what that's going to look like, and how we've supported this across the rear of the vehicle. You'll notice these are still uh, loosely glued in place, so they've just been done. And at this point, we're ready to start bolting this thing together. So we're going to take our mounting plate, set it in place, and start assembling it. We'll show you that next. All right, the next step, there is going to be an option available for some of you installers. Uh, if you happen to be an upfitter or if you happen to have the tools and skills, there is one on the market what's called a plus nut. We don't provide these. Uh, some people also call them a rivet nut or a nut insert. But if you happen to have these and you would like to use them, you sure can in this application. Uh, what we're going to be doing is for these four here on the rear of the vehicle, 
we're going to be using a plus nut, and this is simply just to keep the middle of the plate from bowing or bending up uh, after you've tightened the sides down. Uh, in your kit, you are just provided nuts and bolts where you would be taking the mounting plate, setting it on here, putting the bolt in, and putting a nut and a washer on from underneath. Uh, they accomplish the same thing, but for the installers that are, are doing this as an upfitter, um, using a plus nut allows you to just do all the work from above, and we're going to show you what that looks like next. see our plate has been placed and our first step is going to be to uh, fasten four bolts that go across the rear here. This one, this one, and these two. And uh, as you saw earlier, we used plus nuts so that we can just attach this from above. So you'll see we're able to just tighten these down as so. But uh, in the kit provided, we have bolts, nuts, and washers. So again, you take the same one, you put it in the hole and attach it from underneath with your washer and your nut. Get those four tightened down and then we'll move on to our next step. And here we are using a 3 16 Allen key just to get these all nice and tight. Okay, moving on, now that we have these four uh, attached and tight, we're going to be taking our 7 16 bolts and just getting them ready and putting them through the floor. So you can see over here, we're going to have five. And just go ahead and slip those in, get them prepped. On the passenger side, you'll have three. Just go ahead and get those placed. And we're going to be able to move on and begin putting the underbody plates on next. Okay, at this point, our plate is affixed to the vehicle. We have our bolts through the floor. And I'd like to talk with you a little bit about the underbody mounting plates and what this is going to look like before we actually get underneath the van. And as you'll recall, we have two plates. They fit on the outside of the frame rail. They are a mirror image of each other, but they are specific. So one will only go on the left and one will only go on the right. And you're going to get these up into that cavity. Uh, make sure your bolts that are through the floor are lining up through here. And you're going to take the half inch bolt that's provided, the full thread one here, and it is going to go through your frame rail. Now the whole location is provided from the manufacturer, but it does vary on the ProMasters. So we have given you a couple choices depending on where that hole might end up. Uh, but you only need to get this one bolt through there wherever that location might be. So we'll go ahead and bolt these up and show you what that looks like next. Okay, we are underneath the vehicle now. I wanted to give you a close up of what this plate looks like. This is the driver's side. You can see we have all five of our holes through the floor and tightened. We would want you to tighten the bolts through the floor first and then come over here and hit the frame rail one and that'll suck that in tight against the side. And if we wheel ourselves over and under, I'll show you this is the passenger side. Again, we've only got three holes through the floor here. You won't be needing to put those. You didn't drill holes there. So just get the three through the floor and then come over here and get that one through the frame rail up and tight and you'll be complete with this step. At this point, all of our bolts through the floor have been tightened. The five on the left, the four across the middle, and the three on the right, those are all tight. And then through the frame rail, those bolts are tight as well. So this thing is secure to the vehicle. You can go ahead, remove the tape that you had on the rear. If you didn't have the floor, go ahead and remove the tape to the forward section as well. At this point, we're gonna to prepare to install the loading ramp onto our mounting plate. All right, to get prepared to put the loading ramp in, our first step is gonna to be to take the passenger side lock, get it assembled and get it bolted onto the plate. So I'll show you what that looks like. There was a bag with these provided and you have uh, your passenger side lock plate here, which is as so, and there is a black handle. I'd like to show you this right away. Um, the whole placement will vary just depending on how everything's lining up. So you'll have to check later to see where you really need this. But just to get started, we're gonna go ahead and get this threaded in. And what I'd like to point out right away is that this has a ratchet feature where you can lift it and reposition the handle before you then go ahead and crank it. And you're gonna get this screwed in so that it's just barely protruding through right there and that'll get us set up. 
go ahead and get this placed. Because we're doing a 47 inch ramp, it's gonna sit on the outside here. If we were doing a 37, it'd bolt in over here, obviously. So we're gonna go ahead and get it placed. And you'll notice there was uh, short bolts, 13 millimeter bolts. Go ahead and just get this centered in place here. The location doesn't have to be too specific. There is a little bit of adjustment available later. Get these loosely threaded in. There are four of them provided. Uh, three of them are really easy to reach and they are the most important. If you happen to have the dexterity and ability, I encourage you to fish this bolt in underneath and get that one in there as well, but it is somewhat optional and difficult to get to. And there is a bolt with a nut provided. And what we're gonna do is ask you to throw that nut on, run it in about halfway, and it acts as a limit a little later on. We'll adjust this, but it comes into the side of the mounting shoe and screws in as so. And just go ahead and get that started. We're gonna come back and adjust that at the end. But as it is now, you can go ahead and you take your 13 millimeter, get that centered within here, and go ahead and start tightening all this up. Okay, now that we have our passenger side lock placed, I'm gonna show you an optional feature that you can choose to install if you'd like to. Now's a good time to do it. Uh, we include in the mounting kit, uh, this aluminum five bar diamond plate sheet. And this is uh, gonna serve a few uh, purposes. We're gonna use it uh, to cover our plate here. And it'll just, number one, dress it up a little bit, give it a little bit of a fit and finish. It gives you a little more traction so that you're stepping in and out. You can uh, have confidence in your step. And Furthermore, if you happen to have a floor here, it's gonna help shim it up and bring it back up the level. I would like to point out that if you didn't have a floor, it's gonna be raising this a little bit more, increasing the height of your transition. And should that uh, not suit your needs, maybe you have small wheels or something, you don't wanna have that bump there. Again, this is optional and does not need to be placed. Uh, but we do provide rivets to fasten it. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a drill bit, 3 16th size, and we're gonna be placing five holes in here. We do give you six rivets in the kit. You can place all six if you can, but the idea is in case you have to sacrifice one of those rivets, you've got an extra one laying around. So we'll show you how we're going to place these next and uh, attach this trim plate permanently. I'd like to have you come take, take a closer look at this with me. I'm going to show you a neat trick or, or at least help avoid some frustration as you're drilling through. Uh, where we had placed these two holes, I'm going to want you to mark the end of the plate right here about where that bolt is. And that's because when we place the trim plate, I don't want you accidentally trying to drill through and place your rivet there. You want to know about where that is so you can drill to either side. And so we'll start there and we'll start our drilling.
Okay, at this point we have our holes drilled for our rivets. Uh, what I didn't show you is we've gone ahead and we vacuumed and cleaned up that mess. So this is ready to uh, affix. Uh, we happen to be using air power today. So go ahead, feed that rivet in. Okay, moving right along. This is gonna be the last uh, preparatory step we're gonna do before we actually stand this ramp up in here. So what I'd like you to do is go back to your bag of parts and you'll find a bag with uh, some foreign metal pieces and a yellow nylon block, as well as some foam blocks and six nuts and bolts, uh, as well as this flat piece of steel here. And I wanna have this out and show you how this goes together. It's gonna to be something you're gonna need right away for the next step. Uh, what I'll tell you first is these foam blocks they're for the very last step at the very end. They just happen to be bagged together with this. So go ahead and set these to the side. And if you come a little closer, I'll show you how these plates uh, go on so you have an idea of what you're gonna be doing. They only go on uh, one way, one direction. They are side specific. And so you'll notice this plate here is drilled to match. It's gonna be going right here and it'll happen to overhang over on this channel just a little bit. This one's gonna go like so. And when the ramp gets mounted, the foot of the ramp's gonna go in here and these will set on top to trap it in there. And then we're gonna have six bolts, three on each side, they're gonna go in and trap this plate on there. So we're gonna go ahead and show you how the ramp stands up, and then we'll show you how to put these on next. Okay, we're gonna put this ramp in here, and I'd like to go over a few procedures to get up and in and, and show you where it's gonna be placed before we actually do it here. And the first thing I'm gonna point out is how to actually lift this ramp. Uh, today we're going to be doing it from the ground and using some muscle. If you've watched some of our other videos, you'll know that uh, if you had a forklift, for example, you could lift this up to the service idea and simply stand it up. If you had a chain hoist, you could have it hanging and move into position. But not everybody has that, so today we're going to show you how you can do it with just uh, two hands, or two sets of hands in this case. This ramp does weigh 185 pounds. It's about medium weight as far as we are concerned. We have some that are much heavier in the 300 to 350 pound range. So it does depend which model you're gonna be lifting. But regardless of it, no matter what model you're gonna be doing, I need you to take something to shim underneath. So we're gonna just use this uh, two by four here. And we're gonna be lifting the ramp and getting it underneath. And that's because if you were to simply lift from above here, the secondary leaf would fold open when you go to stand it up. So I'm gonna want you to get your hands all the way underneath, lift up, and then we're gonna be standing it up in place. And what you wanna do is you wanna prepare the mounting foot, which is on a bearing swivel here, and get it so it's the correct uh, placement to put it in the channel here. I will uh, point out that there is a hole in this foot here. It serves no purpose. It was there to be uh, helping when the product was hung to be dipped. So you don't actually end up putting a bolt in there. It does not matter what orientation that is. And that over here, you'll notice uh, it's been left as was. We don't have the lock installed. What we're gonna be doing is taking this nylon bushing over here on the passenger side, and it's gonna rest right in that cradle spot there. And we'll show you why in a minute. But go ahead, find a helper or two, and we're gonna come over here and we're gonna lift this. On that side, there are handles on the lower side of the section, so you can grab onto those plastic handles. That's a much easier uh, side to lift from. This is the heavy side and the tricky side. So get it up. Now once it's standing up in place, it manages itself pretty well. Your helper on the passenger side is going to keep it from falling out of place. And we're going to show you exactly how this bolts in together next. Our first step is going to be to take this uh, bare metal piece here. And we're going to be placing this on the driver's side of this mounting foot. Remember this only goes in one way and does need to overhang on the foot just slightly. But you'll notice the ramp is currently pitched or tipped in the foot here. 
You'll need your partner on the passenger side to lift the ramp up, get this to be square. And once they're helping there a little bit, go ahead and get your three bolts in place loosely. Just go ahead and get these finger tight and run in all the way. And again, at, this, at the same time, your passenger is still holding the ramp, lifting it over there. And now they're really going to do a big lift and make sure that these bolts aren't putting any excess pressure to try to correct that. Make sure this is as level as possible. Take a 13 millimeter wrench and go ahead and tighten this down. And you'll notice here, um, I'm going to actually back up a second. I'd like you to flush this foot up here on the end for me. And we're going to make all this nice and flush, both the plate and the foot in there. Now, I'm sorry, go ahead and tighten this down. Go ahead and make sure that the front one is still tight, kind of like when you're tightening the lugs on a wheel. Go around and check them all. And now you'll notice on the passenger side, when our helper lets go, the ramp is floating here and it's free floating and it holds itself. Now don't get too wild because it's not in there permanently yet. What I'll ask you to do is go ahead and swivel the ramp out a little bit, take the uh, three remaining bolts and your passenger side piece with the yellow nylon. We're gonna swivel the ramp out a little bit you're going to come in on this side and we're going to be placing this and this can be a little tricky so i'll show you how it's done you'll notice this spine here is meant to hit this this is your limit to keep you from opening the the ramp too far and having it hit the body of the vehicle so we're going to swivel the ramp back just a little bit and it's going to keep coming keep coming until it hits right about there and you'll notice this sits a little further forward and that's okay and we're going to go ahead and loosely get these all started. Okay, now these are all loose and this is still movable. And what I want you to do is go ahead and shut the ramp and make sure that when this ramp shuts, it doesn't impede on the yellow nylon block back here. And we'll show you how that looks. If you bring the camera in here, you'll see that when the ramp shuts, it's got free and clear clearance here on the back side. And now when we go ahead and we open it up, you'll see where it hits the stop here. And again, that controls just how far the ramp is really willing to open so you're not hitting the exterior body of the vehicle. If you like the travel and you like the placement here, go ahead and tighten these down with that 13 millimeter. And now, should it be a windy day or maybe you're parked on a hill, if you flip this yellow nylon block forward, it'll trap the spine between the stop and the nylon block, and that ramp will be fixed there and unable to be moved. To store it again, you would have to lift this yellow block and flip it back, and that'll allow the ramp to store just like that. Go ahead and make sure all those are tight, and then we'll move on from there. Okay, moving on, we're going to be placing our passenger side lock. There is an adjustment for the placement on this. So go ahead and just take this Loosely feed it in there, and we're going to be shutting the ramp. And what you're going to be doing is lifting this passenger side lock and allowing the ramp to go in there. Take uh, your black handle and start spinning this down and getting some positive contact in there. Remember, we'd only just put this in, so it just penetrated. This provides positive pressure, and we need to get some pressure going to get this adjusted. So just go ahead and get it down until it starts making contact. Okay, now we're tight. So back it off just a tad. And what I want you to do is get this moved left to right. There's quite a bit of movement here. If you see if all of a sudden it's not grabbing that nylon bushing very well. And if you were to move it all the way to the driver's side, now it's grabbing the welds a little much. 
you want to get that centered perfectly on that nylon bushing so that it's grabbing the ramp side securely. And then you're going to come over here. Remember, we put this bolt in on the far passenger side. This is our limit. And so we need to screw this bolt in so that it's going to make contact with this passenger side lock. I'll show you what that looks like and what that does for us here next. So we're just going to go ahead and fire that in. And we just do this gently until we see this move. Or if we've got enough pressure there, it'll just dead end out and stop on its own. There we go. We have to start running off threads, back that nut off a little more. Okay, we just started making contact, it's pushing. So we wanna make sure we're not actually pushing too far. So again, make sure we like our lock placement. Make sure that it has good pressure and it's now making contact with this inside here. Fire that nut back, tighten that nut against the steel. Make sure this doesn't spin too much. There it is. And we're just gonna use that nut as a lock nut. And what that does for us is, if you lift this handle, swivel the ramp out. Later when this lock gets removed, it always has perfect placement. You come in, you make contact with that bolt, and you've always got it in the correct spot. And what you would then do is take your black handle, tighten it down real nice and tight. This thing's not going anywhere now. And what I like to do is I like to lift it and spin it back so that we know if it's been moving on us or not. So what then I'll have you do is come back and again, shut the ramp and check your work. Again, make sure it's grabbing that nylon bushing nice. I'll take this moment to point out that this lock lever needs to be lifted. It is not intended to be slammed through. It will break this spring and pin situation in the back. So again, every time you're gonna either swing the ramp out or store the ramp. You need to lift this and push it in as so. Okay, our next adjustment is gonna deal with either the sag or the rise of the ramp when it's swiveled externally. So now that we have our lock placed in here nicely, and go ahead and once it was stowed, and if you release it here, what I want you to be mindful of and watch is what happens to the ramp. So in this case, when we pull it out, it actually pops up, it has a little rise. If I go to store it, I have to push it in and down. We don't want that. And depending on your situation, now that you've installed it, sometimes this has some sag or some drop. If it's dropping or making contact here, you know, that's not okay. We have an adjustment for that. What I want you to do is I want this ramp to hold its weight perfectly. You shouldn't have to lift it or lower it or anything. It should slide right in nicely. So the adjustment for that is gonna be on the driver's side. And it's a little tricky. I'd like to point out a few aspects of it. You're gonna be needing two 13 millimeter wrenches and a six millimeter Allen. And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna come down here. There's these three nuts on the inside. What I'd like to have you do is break that nut loose. We're gonna spin it back about a thread and a half. And why that's important is this plate here is threaded, making this a double locking nut. So if we thread this back a thread and a half, we then come over to the bolt head side, pull that out about half a thread or three quarter, and that will loosen up this slip plate, allowing us to tighten or loosen our vertical adjustment bolt, and that'll bring the ramp into adjustment. So we're gonna show you how that looks next. Pay attention. We're gonna begin this slip plate adjustment right now. And so go ahead and take your 13 millimeters, come in here, loosen all three of these, And again, we're only gonna back this off about a thread or thread and a half. It doesn't take much. I'll tell you the back one's always the hardest from this angle. So again, now that our nuts are loose on the inside, I want you to come around to the heads here and I want you to back those bolts out and you'll see that bolt freely spin the nut there. Doesn't take much. I think that one's a little tight, so I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna back that nut off a little and back that head out a little more. Now it's spinning nice and free for me. 
And we'll go ahead and we'll do the one in the back, just like that. Okay, so now our slip plate is loosened up. I'm gonna show you, we're gonna be swiveling the ramp out just a little bit. You'll need a helper again for this. So we're gonna swivel the ramp out. Go ahead, Bobby. And your helper here is gonna to need to take the pressure off that bolt on the driver's side. So just bring it out a couple inches or so. You can either grab it as a cradle or strong arm it, whatever you'd like. It's only gonna take a minute or two to make this adjustment. You're gonna come over here with your six millimeter Allen and your 13 millimeter bolt or a wrench. And again, in this case, our ramp was sitting a little high, so we're gonna be lowering it. If it was low, you'll be tightening this. And you only have to move it about a thread or so to check it. So it doesn't take much. Go ahead and get our Allen in there. And the person on the driver's side should feel this moving. So we're gonna go ahead and just give it a tiny turn. Come over here and we're gonna check on this passenger side now. We're gonna look and see if we like what we've done. Go ahead and lift it. It's still sitting a little high. And you'll notice it will hold itself while you're doing that adjustment. You just need to take the pressure off when you're doing the adjustment. So go ahead, Bobby's gonna lift this again for us and we'll move this one more thread. Okay, Bobby, how's that look? All right, now we're finally making contact with the lower part of the lock and that slips in perfectly. Look at that, that's perfectly adjusted. Now you come back to this side and you tighten up your three horizontal bolts. You're gonna start by taking the head of the bolt, running that in tight because again, this is a threaded plate. And then you come over here and you tighten up your nut side. Go ahead and get all three of these nice and tight like they were, and they'll be ready to move on. Okay, here we go. Again, now we check our swivel one more time. Make sure we're still loving it. It's great and we're ready to move on. Okay, moving on, we're gonna to need to deploy the ramp to gain access to the next adjustment. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna come over here to the passenger side and this is where the ramp is typically operated from. And you're gonna be grabbing this little lever here on the passenger side to free the ramp. So this just gets forwards but I'll let you know that sometimes you'll find this to be frozen. Maybe the vehicle is on a hill or a slope and it's, it's putting a little excess pressure on there. You're simply gonna take your hand, press it against the ramp, take the pressure off it, and that should move freely. We'll show you what that does here in a minute, but go ahead and take both handles and walk the ramp out. Now you get the ramp about this far, three quarters of the way, and then you can go ahead and place it flat as so. And what we're going to be doing is adjusting the pitch of the ramp. So go ahead and take your 13 millimeter wrenches and come up here. And you'll notice that this is now exposed, this rubber bumper here at the top. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take the nut off the back and that'll allow this to freely spin. And this is an adjustment, again, that allows the ramp to sit further back into the vehicle. It'll move it away from the rear door and keep it from banging on the door. And this is an adjustment that uh, is gonna be a little different on each vehicle, depending on your situation. You know, if you have shelves back here, you might not want this leaning so far back. Um, it's gonna be a little dependent on your unique situation. So we'll adjust this as so here, and then we'll show you what it might look like here in a minute uh, to give you an example for your application. Now over here on the passenger side, 
the same rubber bumper exists, what we can do is we can spin this one out and roughly match it with the one on the driver's side. We're gonna check our adjustment for these at the very end. But for now, go ahead and just take one of these nuts off, spin this through, fire that all the way in. Go ahead and throw your nut on the back for now, and we'll take care of that a little later. And what we've done now, I'll show you what that looks like. When we go to store the ramp, the ramp now leans into the vehicle away from the rear door and keeps it from banging. Next, we'll show you another adjustment. Stay tuned. Okay, regarding that rubber bumper adjustment, there's one other thing I'd like to show you. Remember, we talked about how it pitches it forward. One other thing it does is it gets us away from this door jam. Now, in the ProMaster vans, they are quite square and it gives us lots of clearance. It usually isn't an issue. But what I'd like you to see is that when the ramp swivels all the way open, that pitch, you can see the ramp sits here, gets it away from that door jam area. If this was sitting too far forward and binding there, that is what this rubber bumper adjustment is intended to do. It again, it gives you that clearance to move the ramp away from the door jam area. And again, this will be a little bit different on every application, depending on how you want that ramp positioned in your van. Okay, we're gonna make a simple adjustment here. And what I'd like to ask you to do is swivel the ramp out. And I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about first what we're gonna accomplish. Remember this handle here, this lever flips forward. This thing does two things. First, it's gonna hold the ramp leaves together so that they're not rattling going down the road, but it also acts as a limit. You can see this J hook here has movement. This is what keeps the ramp from having rearward travel. So when you go and lock the ramp, that's what keeps it from hitting your back door. And because we've pitched the ramp in further by adjusting this rubber bumper earlier, we now have to make this adjustment. You can see there's a tiny little gap under there. What we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen this. You're gonna take two 17 millimeter wrenches. You come on here and you break this free. And you come down and you loosen this up so that it can make it come up a little bit, but you don't wanna make contact. That'll cause it to be frozen on here. You need to lower it just below and then go ahead and lower your nuts and set that so that you have what you think is good placement. See it's sticking there. We're gonna loosen these, let it have just a little more travel. Still sticking, loosen it on the top a little more, tighten it up there. Still sticking, a little more. And now we're free. Again, we think we like it and we go ahead and we tighten it down. And this, this adjustment will vary depending on where you've placed your rubber bumper. It still has good clearance. Now we're really gonna fire it home. And again, when you're tightening this, you wanna make sure that J hook isn't spinning on you one way or the other. Go ahead and make sure that it has good clearance. And when you go and you store the ramp, again, make sure you lift this lever. This is locked. That's what minimizes the travel, and this is the farthest the ramp will move to the rear. You know, you can imagine the door sits somewhere back here, and I'll keep it, again, from making any contact. Okay, we're in the van now. We've shut the doors behind us. We're going to go back to these foam blocks that I told you to set aside. You'll notice on the back, if you peel this off, it has a self-adhesive there. And this is designed to be one of those emergency backup things. If you hadn't locked the ramp in the stored position, it uh, would be free floating there and it could bounce and make contact with the vehicle. Um, if you lock it, it won't do that. So it is a little bit of a user error prevention thing or, or mitigation, but you go ahead and peel that off. And where these side reels are, that's where that would make contact with your rear door area. So just go ahead and fish these in back here. You can imagine where the ramp would make contact. Go ahead and just stick this to that rear door so that if it was loose, that would keep it, uh, hold it from impacting the door. Do that on both sides where you think it would roughly line up and we should be good to go. One of our last adjustments is gonna be checking on the status of this passenger side rubber bumper. The driver's side rubber bumper that we've already adjusted, that's our dominant one. So we're just looking to match this one up to the same angle that that one's been set at. And you remember we'd screwed this all the way in to begin with, and now we're coming back and we're seeing there's quite a gap between here. Uh, you can fit this through no problem. So what I'm gonna ask you to do is to thread the bumper back out now so that it makes contact against this side of the metal. And once it does make contact, 
Go ahead and take both nuts and fire them up against this metal plate here and they'll act as double nuts and we'll go ahead and tighten that off and this will stay there, never moving. Again, that helps keep the ramp from coming further in. This is the limit for that. At this point, I'd like to go over some operational tips and tricks to make this an easy experience. So first I'd like to deploy the ramp to show you. And remember if there's a little pressure on here or if this handle's frozen, just simply press against the ramp to relieve the pressure. This handle should move freely. Grab both handles on the side of the ramp here and stretch the ramp out. I'd like to point out that we like to make this a fluid movement. It should be easy to deploy. You don't want to be taking the ramp and letting it say duck bill into the ground and slam in a so that'll break the wheels prematurely. It should be nice and easy to lay out. If you get it down, and then you can, of course, always press it down flat as so because it has wheels on the end. And what I'd like to point out right away is that when this ramp deploys, there is a lot of tension over here on the driver's side due to the spring, which is helping make it so easy to lift. And that tension doesn't allow this uh, seam here to fully meet up until you put pressure on the ramp. And that is by design. Again, that's just because there's so much tension over here. So as this looks is as intended and uh, no reason for concern. The next thing I'd like to point out is here on the handle, we provide a, a pin. And so if you were to take this pin off, it can go on either side of the ramp. And we only provide one. And what that will do is it allows this to be used in say a, a manner like a plank or a gangway. You could do vehicle to vehicle transfers. I do have folks in the van life world that would put a sawhorse all the way underneath. It needs to come past the rails here to support it. But they might turn this into a porch or maybe the guy uh, working on his motorcycle or dirt bike would like to back it out and work on it outside of the vehicle instead of working out on the van. Another good thing for the pin here is to go up to a loading dock. Now, I will mention the nine foot ramp is a little short for this. Generally, I like to see it in the 10 and a half foot one, which requires a high roof van, but some applications, this nine footer might work. But the idea is, is you can absolutely go over center and either with it as a plank fashion or over center, you maintain your full capacity. This ramp happens to be a 1,500 pound capacity ramp. Now I will mention that's a place to store it and that's how it's provided. But when you're in the vehicle, this can rattle around as you're going down the road. This might not be the best place to store it long-term. If you're not gonna be using it often, maybe go ahead and put it in the glove box. But for storage, I'd like to point out, now let's put this ramp down. I like to have two hands to deploy it, but when you're going to store it, because of that spring assist, it's super easy. You could use one hand, maybe one or two fingers if you'd like. We'll use two fingers today. You can go ahead and stand the ramp up, and go ahead and push it up like so. To store the ramp, again, to keep the flaps from clapping, and to keep this ramp from having any movement, you must reach in and throw the toggle here on the right side forward to lock the ramp in. Next, let's talk a little bit about the external swivel. So external swivel standard, and the way you activate that is you lift this passenger side lock, and this must be lifted. So you lift and then pull out, and you get your 90 degrees of opening. To store the ramp, you're gonna simply come back. And the thing that's important is this is not designed or intended to be slammed through. You will cause this hinge uh, spring area to break off. So what's supposed to happen is you come over here and you lift, and then push the ramp in, a lot of you stowed and then let go to capture the ramp as so. And now it's stowed and it's ready to be driven down the road. I have the ramp swiveled out here and there's two things I'd like to point out to you. When the ramp is in the external swivel position, this nylon block back here acts as a wind stop. I know we covered this earlier in the install, but I'd like to cover it in the operation as well. And the idea is, is if this was on a hill or if the vehicle was tipped, this ramp was wanting to close on you, say it was moving on you, what you can do is, as it's open, you can flip this nylon block forward and it captures this spine behind the limit here and it keeps that ramp from moving. The other thing I'd like to talk a little bit about is how this passenger side lock is activated. Uh, as we talked about, the external swivel is standard, but sometimes there is a little confusion on the internal swivel. So I'd like to cover that in greater detail. Uh, to activate the internal swivel, it's quite easy. What you're gonna be doing is loosening this black handle. Remember we spun this backward to make it really tight. Go ahead and loosen that. Take your lock out and set it to the side. Come over here and flip your wind stop forward, of course. And now if you take a look, boom, the ramp has internal swivel. 
and the ramp will swing in as so. But it's important to note that we consider this internal swivel optional. So what makes it optional is that the ramp needs to be supported if you were to swivel it in and go down the road, otherwise it's gonna to be torquing on itself. So for example, if you were to buy it in the standard configuration, external swivel only, as you see, you could swing it in, you could hang out here, sit on the back of your bumper and enjoy the day, but you would not be able to drive down the road with the ramp stowed internally like this. If you were to wanna to do that, you have to purchase another interior lock. It is something that oftentimes people add after the fact. They swivel this in, they see where it's actually gonna go, and they decide that they'd like to have this out of the way on a more permanent basis. For example, I have some customers that only use a machine once or twice a week, and the ramp is actually purchased just to facilitate that movement, but being it's not used often, they go ahead and they move it out of the way for the days that they don't need it. So next we're gonna show you what that lock placement's gonna look like. All right, we're back inside the van. I'd like to show you the interior swivel lock placement. You can see we have the ramp swung in as so. If you come down here and look, you'll notice uh, this is what that, that passenger side lock looks like. And if you could imagine this ramp was out, you know, that lock is gonna sit right about there. And so the thing I like to point out for folks is this could be considered a bit of a toe banger. You know, this lock could be removed to give it a lower profile. And you could even remove the black handle if you wanted. But what would be happening is this mounting shoe would be simply drilled and bolted through the floor. You could use plus nuts or through bolts. This is an open area underneath there. And this is what is required to make that internal swivel so you could drive down the road. Uh, again, the ramp needs to be supported with the lock to keep it from torquing on itself. This is an option, and this is something that can easily be added after the fact. Next, I'd like to address one point of adjustment on the ramp, which is optional. You may or may not need to do it, but it can help with some of the rattle that is reported sometimes from the van uh, traveling down the road and the ramp making excess noise as it bangs against itself. And one of the popular places to have some excess noise is actually these flaps here. They both are flexible and they move a little bit. And you can imagine this be, uh, making noise going down the road might drive you crazy and there is an adjustment for that. And what's happening is underneath here, there's a piece of spring steel that gives this flap a bit of a memory. And I'll deploy the ramp and show you what's gonna happen to it. If you bring this down, you will notice that the flap here is making pretty good contact with the ground. But if we wanna keep those flaps from touching or if they're banging going down the road, Brace it here and grab in the middle and pull over center. Now look, the ramp is floating. Now this may or may not be the correct adjustment for your needs. Depends on the wheel size, depends what surface you're rolling onto. You know, if you're gonna be deploying this onto a class five gravel driveway, you would wanna have a little extra room. And of course, when you go and you roll onto there, this does fall back down to uh, make good contact with the ground, but the spring steel lifts it back up to give it that space. And when you go and you store the ramp, You'll notice there is now quite a bit of room in between these two flaps. And the upper flap that touches this bumper area can be adjusted in the same manner. So instead of having to pull this one all the way over center, you can adjust them both as needed. So that's something that you'll have to adjust uh, as an on needed basis, depending on your unique circumstances. Next, I'd like to address the interior measurements of how much room this ramp actually takes up in the back of this Promaster van. So starting here on the driver's side, let's start up high and you'll remember we adjusted this ramp to lean quite a ways in. So currently this one is sitting 12 inches from the back door. There is four inches in between the door here and that is more than is really needed. The ramp doesn't move nearly that much. Even if we were to press all the way forward, we still have three inches there. So it, at this moment, it's 12 inches in, but again, that could be adjusted to be as little as eight inches from the door. It just depends on if you have shelving going on here or maybe you want to hang something from your rear door. Um, it'll determine how much space you want to have it set back from. If you were to continue down lower and look at the swivel hub area, I'm going to measure off the interior weather stripping here inside of the door jam. And if you were to look at that, the ramp itself is protruding in maybe nine inches or so from the rear of the door. And the whole mounting plate, if you were to measure back from that weather stripping area, again here in the corner, um, let's call it 11 and a half. It ends just before the rear tie down point here. And coming over from the interior door wall here, this is gonna be, we just said 16 inches, that'll be generous. Looking over here at the passenger side, again, coming off this rear weather stripping, the ramp's gonna be coming in, let's say nine and a half, 10 inches or so. 
And again, coming off of the door, excuse me, the outside body, um, nine and a half inches or so space in here to the wall. And of course, we don't have this door shut. We're getting a little extra light, but this distance here would be the same. Uh, and again, that measurement, that 12 inches is to this side rail here. If we'd gone from the door to the ramp itself, we're only talking 10 inches here. So hopefully that gives you the little idea of just how much space this ramp actually takes up in the back of the van. Of course, if you have any questions, please give us a call. Congratulations, we've installed the swivel ramp. We're gonna call this complete. Should you have any questions, please give us a call. We are here to help. Thanks again for watching.